Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Take your Bible, please, and turn, first of all, tonight to Isaiah 46. Isaiah 46. Brother Rich, thank you for singing and singing well and singing something that we could understand and uh, something that rattles our cage. Amen? We like that. And uh, Pastor, thank you for inviting me to be here for these days, these meetings. Um, you know, events like this remind me of when I was in high school, year before last. Um, it reminds me when I was in high school and we played basketball. And on a night when we had a basketball game, about an hour before school was out, they'd take us all to the gymnasium and we had a pep rally. It's trying to get us fired up about the big event. And meetings like this uh, maybe have a lot, of, a lot of purposes, but one of them is it's like a spiritual pep rally. So that I will and you will come tomorrow and next week that we'll be fired up about doing what we ought to always be doing. And so, um, you got one more night to go tomorrow night, and I'm sure that it's going to just keep right on plowing along. But I appreciate so much getting to be here, and I'm grateful not only for what Sycamore Baptist Church is doing, but for what all of these men here in this area are doing in pulling together and uh, just determining to make an impact on Jackson County and the surrounding areas. And God bless you guys for that. And for all of you folks who are helping them do it, God bless you too. No no pastor can do it alone. You can't. I was, I was a pastor a long time. And no pastor can do it by himself. He's got to have people who pull with him and love him and support him. And as long as he's doing right and living right, you ought to pull with him. And God bless you for it. Now, I'm going to do what I do this this uh, evening. It's been a great joy, I mean, uh, to get to preach with Mike Allison last night and Brother Joe Arthur tonight, both of whom are among my close friends. I love them both dearly. And, uh, <clears throat> and both of them are men who just are greatly used of God. And I'm always delighted when I get to preach with them. And Brother Joe Arthur, you're going to be blessed by hearing him tonight. And uh, so I'm going to get up and do what I do and not take more than two hours and give him plenty of time. Isaiah 46. Reading just a little bit from this chapter, starting in verse number 8. Where the Lord says, remember this. And I could just park on that a little while. Remember this and show yourselves men. And we could park there a little while too. Remember this and show yourselves men. Bring it again to mind, O ye transgressors. Remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying... My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country, yet I have spoken it, I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it, I also will do it. Now, any number of things in those verses that I read, but more than once in those verses, the emphasis is given to not forget about yesterday. Don't destroy yesterday. Keep yourself focused and remember yesterday. Uh, turn, o turn over a page to chapter 48 of Isaiah and verse number 3. 48, 3, he says, I have declared the former things from the beginning. And they went forth out of my mouth, and I showed them, and I did them suddenly, and they came to pass. I notice again, he says, I, I told you about things that already happened, but I told you about that from the beginning. And once again, he's putting up the flag and he's saying, 
Remember that stuff that happened yesterday? Don't forget it. Uh, turn over to the New Testament with me now to, uh, to Ephesians chapter 3, and here's, here's a verse that uh, will be more familiar perhaps. Uh, chapter 3 of Ephesians, verse number 21, says, Unto him, God, be glory in the church by Christ Jesus, and look at this, throughout all ages, world without end, amen. Throughout all ages, that would suggest that uh, we, we are to keep the Lord in focus and provide uh, what we do to glorify him and keep the Lord Jesus in, in the forefront. Uh, throughout all ages, that would, that would mean last century, this century, next century. That would mean last week, this week, next week. Last month, this month, this month. Last year, this year, next year. Throughout all ages. Um, Let's look also at Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1, uh, verse 8 and following. Hebrews 1, 8. But unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest. And they all shall wax old as doth a garment, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years fail not. Now, one more. Look at 13.8 in Hebrews. Chapter 13 and verse 8. 13.8 says, Jesus Christ, the same, yesterday and today and forever. Now, I'm going to tell you right up front, I like modern times. I really do. I flew to, uh, I flew to Detroit yesterday on a jet airplane. I did not have to come in an ox cart. Now, I flew on that jet airplane because somebody in the yesterdays of the past came up with the idea for flight. And somebody in the yesterdays of the past uh, put the steel and the aluminum and all of the technology and the engineering together so that I could get on there and fly from Nashville to Detroit in one hour and five minutes. I like modern times. In fact, Pastor, I really like the hotel that you put me in over here. It is a very nice comfort inn, and it is very, very nice. Um, I, 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 like, I like that kind of stuff. I, I'm glad I did not have to stay in a pup tent in the back of the churchyard like we might have had to have done maybe some years before. I'm really glad that somebody came up with the idea for a hotel. Somebody put the concrete blocks together. I mean, all of this out of yesterday. Those concrete blocks, I mean, when they came up, they said, we're going to build a, we're going to build a comfort inn on that spot. Somebody had already, had already invented concrete blocks. They'd invented steel. They'd invented drywall. They'd invented paint and all that stuff. All of that came out of yesterday. I walk in there 24 hours ago and check in the hotel, and I get the benefit of all of those yesterdays. Now, I like modern times. Uh, for instance, I... <laughs> I mean, I like meeting in this nice building. I, I personally prefer meeting in this building to meeting outside under a tent. I'm, just, I'm, I'm not fussing with the tents. I'm just saying I prefer. You had allergies, you'd prefer it too. But I like, I like meeting in the building, air conditioning in the summer, heat in the winter, nice comfortable seats so you can sleep if you want to. I, I like I like the building. 
But hey, this building, this building didn't, it didn't just happen uh, 24 hours ago. Uh, I, mean, I mean, somebody invented carpet. Somebody learned how to make pews. And all of this was done in the yesterdays of a year ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 100 years ago. All of this stuff began to come into play. And even longer than that with some of it, I mean, some of the trees uh, that were used in this uh, might have grown uh, a long, long time ago. So we, we enjoy the modern stuff not because of what we did after breakfast this morning, but because of yesterday and yesterday and yesterday. Not a thing, not a thing of what we do. Not my flight on the airplane, not staying in the hotel, not meeting in this building. None of this would be possible today if it were not for yesterday. Now, I thank God for yesterday because I got saved in one of the yesterdays of my life. Just a lad of a boy, somebody brought the gospel that I'd not heard before, and I got saved in one of those yesterdays of my life. I got called to preach as a teenage boy in one of the yesterdays of my life. It's been a long time ago now, but, but, but I got called back there in one of my now yesterdays. I got married in the yester years, in the, one of the yesterdays of my life. Listen, I, I could go on and on. I thank God for the yesterdays, but admittedly the past is past, and it cannot be reclaimed, it cannot be relived. And what I'm about to make the point on to you tonight and what I want to emphasize to you, let me make clear to you, we are not living in the past, but we would be less than wise if we did not learn from the past. Why do we try to reinvent the wheel? Why do we uh, act as though that nobody knew anything till we got here? Today, it's like, oh, we got a new idea. Hey, all you church folks, we got a new idea. We got a new philosophy. We got a new way. And a lot of it is just repackaging the same old blunders that were committed a while ago under the guise of, well, we got something new. Now, the past, it's always with us. You, you can't relive it. You can't change it. But you sure can benefit from it. You can benefit from it. You can build on it. And you can be blessed by it if you'll pay attention. The past is really an asset. We ought not to be dissing the past. We ought not to be uh, acting as though, hey, since we got here, no, no, no. The past is an asset. It is a treasure cho a trove of uh, good things for us. It, 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 is, it is a reservoir uh, from which we can draw. It, it is a university of classic training for us. I mean, I'm talking about uh, in yesterday. I mean, I mean, you think back. It's out of yesterday that we got the Bible. I mean, the creation was in one of the yesterdays of the past. The gospel came to us because of a yesterday. I mean, we have our roots. We have our moorings. We have our heritage in the past. And the knowledge that we have comes out of the past. Every encyclopedia, I mean, it is a package of words, voluminous words about what's already been found out. Out of the past it comes. Our know-how is from the past. We find our heroes and our models, our mentors from the past. No, nobody, nobody takes a raw recruit first day of boot camp at Paris Island. Nobody takes the Marine who just showed up, just recruited. Nobody says, hey, he's going to be my mentor, and man, I'm going to model after him. Nobody does that. But they pick out some war hero from the past, I mean, they, they herald the good tidings of MacArthur or Patton or somebody out of the past, and they build on that. The, the heroes, the models, the mentors, they come out of the past. And you and I find the answers that we need to our questions. Our questions today, the answers come from yesterday. We're looking for solutions 
We may prowl around with things, but we'll use the stuff out of the past to solve what today has for us. In fact, I'm going to tell you, today's going to be real rough without yesterday. It's going to be real rough without yesterday. I'm glad somebody learned how to make biscuits. I'm glad somebody had learned how to make bagels. And not only that, but they went and made them and they had them ready when I got up this morning. I'm glad. I mean, today is going to be rough without yesterday. And every tomorrow that we anticipate, every tomorrow needs to be built upon the unchangeable elements of yesterday. Unchangeable elements, I say. I'm talking about yesterday remaining the same today and remaining the same tomorrow. You say, oh, but everything's changing. No, no, everything's not changing. No, everything's not changing. Now remember, I like modern times. I, I like a big screen full co- for watching basketball, baseball, go- no, not golf, not to go- no, not golf. I, I, I go watch gr- grass grow, but I, I don't want to watch. I won't. Anyway, I like the big screen for watching basketball, watching baseball. I, I like that. I like, I like that kind of stuff. But, but listen, everybody is not changing. God doesn't change. The Bible doesn't change. That is not if you're using the right Bible. Scriptural principles do not change. Convictions ought not to change. The moral codes of God do not change. What was wrong yesterday is wrong today, and it will be wrong when the sun comes up tomorrow. What was right then is right now, will be right coming up. Now, that's why you instill your values for your child's adulthood you instill your values into them now. You got it from somebody. You latched on to it. And your youngsters are coming along now. And, and some, some of them will try to say, well, it's different now, Daddy. It's, it's not the same now. Don't, 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 let them, don't let them sell you that. You look them right in the eye and, and just tell them, tell them you mow just a little bit more than they do and, uh, and, it, and it's true, it's true, the TV's a little different and the car's a little different and all of this. I mean, uh, some things like that come along. We like modern times, but the principles don't change and the moral values don't change and the who we are doesn't change. Now, uh, today, today will be yesterday when tomorrow gets here. So... Today we build out of yesterday because we know when tomorrow comes this will be another yesterday. I mean, it's, it's interesting to figure how this is going to work. But what I'm saying is if you don't go messing around and scrambling up all the eggs of your moral values, when tomorrow comes, you, you'll still know that uh, red's red and blue's blue and green's green and two plus two equals four. You, you won't be buying into some new packaged version of things uh, because you say, no, it came from there, we had it here, and we're going to have it there. Now, there are elements at work in America to change all of yesterday's values. I mean, big elements, major elements at work to change all of yesterday's values. You say, why are they trying to do that? Because they can't get their way if they... If they keep yesterday's values. They can't take us where they want to take us if yesterday's values stay in place. They've got to rechange our values. I mean, everything from our social mores. I mean, everything has to change for them to take us where they intend to take us. You say you're talking about some of the politicians? Yes. You say you're talking about some of the clergymen? Yes. You say you're talking about some of the educators? Yes. You say you're talking about some of the marketers? Yes where they're wanting to take us. Now, you say, well, well, uh, well who, who, who are you talking about? Well, let me give you a list of the 10 most wanted people in America. I mean, the 10 most wanted. The ACLU. And you know what that stands for? That's anything Christian looks ugly. They're not our friends. The National Education Association. The NEA. I know some of you probably work in schools, and God bless you. 
But the NEA is not my friend, it's not your friend, it's not our kids' friends. It is a powerful, liberal, left-wing, looney tune outfit. And they're trying to take us where we had never been before. In fact, they're getting a good bit of it done. And I think they're on the, on, they're on the enemies list. They're on the 10 most dangerous people in America. The NOW crowd, that's the National Organization of Women, which is actually the National Organization of Liberal Women. Because most women that are thinking straight are not in that. In fact, anybody that's thinking straight is not in it. Uh, the news media, the news anchors, most of them, most of them are doing dangerous things and taking us uh, where, where we ought not to go. Uh, I mean, the press, all of it, the Hollywood crowd, the Hollywood crowd, the politically correct crowd, the abortion butchers, the abortion butchers, the social engineers in the bureaucracy, the liberals in the pulpit, the religious false prophets, I mean, like Islamists and cultists and, and the contemporary and emerging church crowd. And I, well, that's 10. Oh, and what about the liquor industry and the drug crowd and all of the left-wing liberal politicos and the pornography crowd and the gay crowd and the, and the, and the same-sex marriage crowd? I mean, I mean, these are dangerous elements in our society. And uh, when I go to build something, I'm not looking to any of that bunch. But instead, I'm just saying, give me yesterday. They say, where do you want that? Well, I want it at home for one thing. See, yesterday at home, the parents were actually in charge. Yesterday at home, parents could spank us when it was needed. And by the way, spanking does not teach violence. In fact, it corrects it. Yesterday, children didn't get everything they wanted or hardly anything they wanted. Boy, have we sure come a long distance now. You walk into Wendy's or Burger King at McDonald's, some young couple standing there. The daddy is about 6'4", and he, I mean, he is built like a tank. I mean, big old arms. I mean, he's, he's, got, he's got abs and all this stuff. I mean, he is built, and he's got a little four-year-old and a two-year-old standing there. And that big old guy, he leans over, and he says, I mean, I'm waiting behind. I'm wanting to order. Big old guy, he leans over to his four-year-old and his two-year-old, and he says, what would you like to eat? And the kid, I just look, I mean, it's like he can read. I mean, he's looking up at all the stuff on the menu, and he doesn't know what he wants to eat. Do you, do you want a hamburger? No. Do well, you want a hot dog? No. Well, you, well, yeah, a hamburger. Well, what do you want on it? Do you want pickles on it? Do you want onions on it? Do you want mayonnaise on it? I mean, what do you want on it? They say, what's the problem? Order something for the kid. <laughs> Put it in front of him and tell him to eat it. You say, oh, but I might order something he doesn't like. He will get hungry. Now, there will come a time, 15, 20 years, there will come a time when he can order for himself. There will come a time when the little rascal, little darling, excuse me, <laughs> there will come a time when he can order for himself without holding me up for a day and a half. But when he's just a little scamp like that, order something for him. You are in charge if you're the daddy or the mama. And by the way, being in charge at your house is a good thing. That don't make you a tyrant. It just means you're in charge. Children need to learn restraint. They need to learn discipline. They need to learn behavior. And by the way, that's the way it was most places yesterday. And... Uh, we, we just need yesterday at home. We, we need yesterday at school. Yesterday at schools, the teachers were in charge. There was a paddle in every classroom laying on the desk and a Bible on the other corner and the teacher read the Bible every morning and used the paddle whenever she felt like it. The Board of Education had five holes drilled in the big end of it. And by the way, 
In those days of yesterday, the principal's office was a fearful place. There were no couches for the psychiatrist. It was not a counseling venue. The schools of yesterday, you had homework, you actually did it or you failed. Nobody was dumbing it down so you could get through. Parents didn't come to school every time their kid thought his rights had been violated. Yesterday, yesterday. And by the way, in yesterday's schools, we had all kinds of big problems. I mean, kids chewing gum in class and stuff like that. We didn't have to have metal detectors at the doors and we didn't have to have policemen roaming the halls. Yesterday, yesterday, give me yesterday at school. Give me yesterday at church. Yesterday at church, the preacher was the man of God and we loved him. We, we believe what he preached. You can understand the words of the songs. It didn't sound like a nightclub every time the choir cranked up. I mean, I mean, people respected the house of God. Whatever their best was, they put it on, they came. I mean, listen, we came to church in the yesteryears and we heard the thunders of God and the lightning of heaven struck in the place. Nobody was trying to help you to discover yourself. Nobody was trying to help you to find your best you. I mean, hell was preached. Heaven was preached. Yesteryear, yesterday. By the way, some of us are still doing it, as you know. Give me yesterday at church. Give me yesterday in America when it was wrong to desecrate the flag, when our privileges got more attention than our rights, when people worked hard and did well, give me yesterday in America where patriotism was honorable and internationalism had not been thought of yet. Give me yesterday in America where we fought our wars to win. We actually armed our soldiers. Tell you what, it, 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 it agitates me. I mean, it aggrets me to no end that our soldiers on our military bases are disarmed, every one of them across America and around the world. If they're on base, they cannot carry live ammo. That's a shame and a disgrace in the greatest country on the, on the planet. Give me yesterday where, where we fought our wars to win. Give me yesterday where entitlements were unknown and where we passed a budget, balanced it, and had money left over. Give me yesterday. Because I want to build some things. And I don't want to build out of rotten stuff. I want to build out of solid, proven things. I want to build something so that the enemy can be defeated, so that the enemy will not look at what we've done and mock us like he does when he knows we've built out of rotten foundations. Give me yesterday so that when the enemy approaches, I will be able to speak openly and speak plainly and, and, and identify the enemy and, and go after the enemy. I'm telling you, when the enemy comes after your home and your school and your church and your country, the pious little platitudes of the psychiatrist just will not fly the plane. It won't do it. Give me yesterday where criminals were criminals. We treated them like criminals. Give me yesterday where the church was the hub of the community and the pastor and the Sunday school teachers were considered to be somebody important. This passage in Isaiah, God said, I told you from the beginning what the end was going to be. He said, I'm telling you those former things, remember this, remember this. And what did he say? He said, man up, man up, man up. Step up to the plate. Be a man in this regard. Don't buy into the superficial, superficial, shallow poppycock. Don't buy into that, but build on the solid stuff. Pastor, if you set out to build another building here, and I don't care what it is, how big it is, how small it is, if, 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 you, if you came to a meeting and said to the folks, now, we're, go we're going to put a building right out here to the side, and I tell you what, I've come up with this grandiose idea. We're going to put a foundation in and we're going to make the foundation out of marshmallows. 
Everybody likes marshmallows. Everybody likes marshmallows. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they're good. They, they, I mean, everybody likes marshmallows. We're going to put the foundation in, but it's going to be a marshmallow foundation. Now, I haven't been around here but a couple of days, but I'm guessing you've got some folks in your church who would whisper in your ear and they would say, Pastor, have you checked on the marshmallow market lately? They would, wouldn't they? Sure they would. Because, and he's not going to do that, obviously. But anybody and everybody who's thinking knows that if you're going to build a building, it may just be a little garage or it may be a big auditorium like this. But whatever you're going to build, you've got to put in the solid stuff. And so we build, we build out of what's known. We build out of what's proven. We build out of what has been demonstrated to be the right stuff. And God said, I've told you, I've told you, I've told you what the form, formula, I told you what it is from the beginning. He said, I told you how the end would be. And he said, I told you, remember this, remember this. You say, why did he tell them to man up and be men? Why do you think he did that? Because there's always somebody coming along saying, hey, if you guys were really with the times, they're always coming along and saying, Oh, we've got this grand idea. Oh, are you folks still doing that old hat stuff? Always somebody. And and if and if you're if if you if you're if you're still in puberty, those mockers come. You, you know what you know what little guys do when they're in puberty and the and the mockers come? They shrink back. They hide, they wilt, they melt. But what he said is, remember this and be a man about it. Have some maturity, stand up to it, and know God said, I told you from the outset how it ought to be. And we saw in passage after passage after passage, the same, the same, the same, the same. Yesterday, today, and forever the same. And so when I start trying to figure out stuff, here I am today. Well, tomorrow's coming. Yesterday is long past. And there's all kinds of stuff back there. I mean, shelves full of stuff out of the past. And if I want to know what to do about today and what I anticipate for tomorrow, I look to yesterday. And I draw from there today. And I do it for tomorrow's sake. I've got grandkids that are going to be adults tomorrow. In fact, some of them will have kids of their own in the not too distant future. And so we're thinking about those tomorrows. What, what are we doing about those tomorrows? Listen, we're trying to do today based on what we learned from yesterday, what will serve us well when tomorrow shows up. I don't want to be a fool. I don't want to be a flop. So when those storms are brewing and blowing, give me yesterday. When the enemy marches through the gate, give me yesterday. When the accuser of the brethren rears his ugly head and opens his venomous mouth, give me yesterday. When I need a savior, give me yesterday. When the hordes of hell seem to be running roughshod and the inmates become in charge of the asylum, give me yesterday. See, today is dependent upon yesterday. Tomorrow, can, uh, tomorrow we can face if today we honor yesterday. Tomorrow has hope if today we get help from yesterday. Today is doable because somebody did yesterday well. They did well there. We can do well here. Hopefully that they will do well in the days coming. Folks, yesterday's the well from which we can draw. Yesterday is the arsenal with which we can arm ourselves. Yesterday is the bank where all we need is on deposit and we can write a check anytime we please. Yesterday. Yesterday, yesterday. I'm just saying to you, give it to me, give it to me. Please. Give me yesterday, and I hope you'll buy into yesterday and let it serve you today because when you get to tomorrow, you'll be glad that you didn't ditch the ship today. Give me yesterday. Jesus Christ, the same 
Yesterday, today, tomorrow. Yes, same then, same now, same then. God help us to remember to draw out of yesterday. Our Father, we thank you.